Hey guys. Uh, sorry, I missed last week's upload. Um, only the second time in seven years. Not that bad. And I did make the video. The problem is I didn't test the magnets beforehand. So major fail. I'll show you in a minute. But I wasn't going to release a video that like works 10% of the time if you're only carrying one key. You know what I mean? So I was actually up traveling north and spent a day at Buckle Guy and filmed a bunch of videos there and grabbed the hardware that I need to make this a viable project that I'm actually going to use in my house. Um, which I say that because like when you make 52 projects a year, you can't realistically keep all of them. I don't need that many wallets or anything like that. But this is like a cool home goods thing. Um, it also involves a pre-made die that Buckle Guy sells and Texas Custom Dies makes. And so if you have a die cut, if you have a, a press, um, super easy to make. And it's one of those really good holiday gifts for someone who kind of, you've already made a wallet for, you've already made a bag for. Um, this is something for their home. So without ado, uh, we're doing a little late night crafting because I've had one hell of a week and a long weekend. And I just figured let's, uh, Let's finish this up and get this out on Monday. Um, here we go. This is a magnetic keychain holder. So here was the main goal, right? Was to have a nice, uh, like family keychain set that was magnetic using the 18 millimeter snaps that we've been using a lot. The problem is. Um, I just thought it'd be really cool that everyone have a spot would have a spot. It clips in, and then there's a guard that so the keys don't dent your wall. Um, but the magnets are plenty strong to hold wallet pockets together. It's just if you have like three or four keys or a heavy key fob, it just like they pull right off. Um, and you can see I'm pulling it, and it's not you know I have to lift it off. But when you go to put it on, you can see it clips in, but it's way, it's not strong enough. So while it would have been cool, and if they make like a line 20 or line 4, 24 size, they'll be able to fit a bigger magnet in it. So this will be able to be made a reality. Um, we are gonna go with the normal round dot, uh, tried and true magnets that they sell. And I have already made three of the four keychains. So you could emboss, you do them in different color leather, you could emboss them, you could do whatever. Um, you know, mom, dad, kids, roommates, whatever you want to, you know, however you want to make them distinct so everyone knows whose keys they're grabbing. And we are going to use the cutting die. Uh, Buckeye sells a bunch of keychain cutting dies on their website ready to go. Uh, I think this one's like 70 bucks. And uh, it's, it's Texas Custom Dies. I can tell you that I have 10 year old dies from them that have like 50,000 impressions. They've never needed to be sharpened. So you get a really high quality piece uh, when you buy one of these pre-made pieces. And it's nice cause I mean, you know, kind of a universal shape, but it's like a little bit elongated. So, uh, you know, you can do a lot with it. I'm gonna do my best to kind of nest this into the shapes I've already cut out. Like that. Kind of to eliminate waste. And that's all it takes. So we'll make the key fob. Uh, we got our blade. We're going to make it a blade again. And all we need is like a half inch strip of this stuff. Um, now if you want me to compare this to uh, Veladon, it's basically the same stuff. It's a little bit thinner, which I like because you can, Veladon is thin, but sometimes it's like just a little too rigid. And this stuff is like a little less rigid than Veladon. So you can double up. I wouldn't say it's half as rigid. Like if you do two pieces of this, it's probably one and a half times as rigid as 
two pieces of felt on it. Three to four ratio on stickiness and, and that kind of thing. We're only going to do one piece though because we only need one piece. So we're just going to put this right here. And since we're going to stitch around everything, we're going to put rivets in here. So that's what this rivet is for on these. That rivet is so it's catching here and here. So it'll prevent any stretch. Um, the next thing we need to do is find the center of here, roughly. And as you can see, like we're not riveting or anything. So you don't have to be exact about it. Um, as long as when you glue it in and it kind of molds, it doesn't look too out of place, I suppose. All right, so we're basically, we need to find the center point of one side of this uh, so that we can glue this in. Now, you can eyeball it. I'll be honest with you, the other three I eyeballed. But if you want to get an exact measurement, um, measure across the widest part, five millimeters. So we'll take our dividers Bring them out to 2.5 millimeters ish. There we go. And we can go from the bottom and make a little mark. And then just make sure that we're centered by tracing around and making sure. Sorry, these are loose. So, so we're a little off center, but we'll move over just a little tiny bit. There we go. Like I said, really don't worry too much about this being perfectly centered. So, kind of anticlimactic, but the first step is we're just going to put a little dab of glue here and a little dab of glue on the flat part. And then we'll stick these together before we glue everything else together. And while those are drying, I'm gonna go grab us a split ring. So we're gonna slide on our, um, you could do a D ring or a split ring. I'm just doing a, doing a split ring. And then I totally forgot to film gluing, but this is already glued, but another coat won't hurt it. Um, you're gonna to wanna to leave like an inch and a half in the middle here. And then you wanna get it, you wanna get a good coat around this cause we're gonna use like a bone folder to kind of smush it all together. But it's kind of interesting, I was, I was like, oh, I, I want to film this video at night. And, and I did the, the hour long video about business that you guys really liked and I filmed it at night. And I have, what do they call it, a delayed circadian rhythm. So like I went and had tests on when I was in college and stuff. And my natural sleeping hours are from 3 a.m. to 11 a.m. And so I just kind of, I asked the doctor, I was like, well, how do I change it? He goes, well, you can either change it or you're in the position to just embrace it and there's nothing wrong with being awake. I mean, that's enough sleep. And if you can work into the night, then work into the night. And it ended up working out really well because that's basically 11, 10, 9, 8, 8 a.m. to midnight on the West Coast. And a lot of my collaborators... Melissa from Dad Hands, a lot of them are all on the West Coast. So I end up being awake, basically. I just live West Coast time on the East Coast. That's basically all it is. But, um, but for a long time, I was really, I didn't want to film at night. And then I got these wonderful lights, and then it became just me. And I was like, you know what? I, I want this to be more of a, an authentic view of what it's like to run the channel and everything. Because a lot of the times, I'll be making my samples at this time of night. And it's not that late right now. It's... Like 10.30. Um, so, like at 10.30 last night, I was sewing up all of these. And I figured I'd say I want to show how to make it on screen. I'm not going to make a, a four-piece holder. I did that already, and I showed you the picture of it. Um, I think it's actually interesting that you can kind of, like, make these as... Like, you could make a 12-unit magnetic if, if you had a very large family or dorm or whatever. The concept for everything is going to be the same, but I can't decide whether I want to make a multi or a single. You know, we'll make a multi. We'll make a three. Um, a three holder, because then I'll have one left I can make my single after that for, for myself. Because um, I, I want to show you, Bugle Guy 
Just explain to me what the holes in their rollers were for, and I feel kind of... Oh, you guys aren't even looking at me. Sorry. Now, I forget that I show my face sometimes, and you don't always have to be staring at my hands. Um, Buckle guy showed me what the holes in their acrylic rulers are for, um, because I was very... When they showed me their rulers, I was like, you don't want people cutting with acrylic rulers, and they were like... And Kevin is a... Who's their um, engineer. He comes from, like, very traditional drawing everything by hand and he showed me he's like no it's to make circles and curves and space things evenly and I was like no shit so I'm going to show you guys how to use that and to do that I need to make multiple holes for the magnet so we'll do that because it's a really cool skill that I was not aware of that saves a ton of time trying to figure out like you have four inches you need to fit three things you want them evenly spaced I didn't get that far in math so um so we'll do three this is dry. So, what we're going to do, we have our stiffener, we have our magnet, and we're just going to fold it in half. And I like to start from the top here and line it up as best I can. And then kind of go from the inside out because we have that extra thickness. But I'm not really going for a wet molded look because it's going to have shape on both sides. Um, I would like to prioritize, like technically the front would be the rounded part. Um, but all I do is just kind of this. And well, right now I'm just getting some glue off because that was like the one of the sloppiest glue I've ever done. I'm going to use, I've been absolutely loving uh, Buckle Guy. I just started selling a bunch of different like modeling and um, shaping tools that I think are for toolers, but the like the curves, this lets you get like a nice soft curve, but it's not as sharp as like just a traditional bone folder. So because the magnet is curved, it matches that curve and it's able to get like, okay, so this is a little bit sharper, right? You don't have to like, in my opinion, this kind of smoothness, looks so much nicer than like a hard curve and it just because it hides like you're never going to get this perfectly straight and let you make a jig and all that stuff it hides all those little crafting sins and uh flip it over kind of do the same thing it's flat on this side so make sure you get a good connection there um, but i'm not going to force this all the way down now before we go about sewing if you'll notice what i did was i took the smallest rivet that i had punched out some tiny washers, and I just thought it would look nice to have a little washer up there because it was, this shape is really nice if you want to tool into it and stamp into it, but it plain, it looks great plain. Like I made a plain one like this. This is a plain one. This has uh, five layers of leather in it. I sculpted it kind of like a teardrop. And that looks really nice. It's like super hefty. But I was looking at this and I was like, you know, I think having a little rivet right there would add a little bit of detail. And I just, it, for some reason, it looked like there was like an air tag thing, and I wanted to make sure people knew that it wasn't. I suppose you could make it an air tag thing, but um, I just wanted it to look like it was not modern technology. And I don't think magnets are considered modern technology. Maybe you could fill me in on that in the comments. So that's what I did. And we have to do it on this one too. So. We will line these up, and I can see that this hole is punched in between this line. So I'll make a marking, I'm just going to eyeball it right there. That's where my rivet hole goes, and now I have to go make some washers. Let's stitch first, and then we'll wash our rivet, because we have a bunch of glue drying. We have a lot going on right now. So, I keep set caliper set to three and a half millimeters at all times. I always have. That's my preferred stitch distance. So because this is die cut, we don't need to sand it or anything because we glued it up nice and straight. And there's the line that we're going to follow. I'm going to use five millimeter stitching chisels, believe it or not. And these dies work lovely for those, and I'll show you that. So the reason I really like the five millimeter chisels for this is that this is long enough that I can use my nine tooth 
and get a full nine tooth punch in before I have to start messing around with curves. So there's one and it's easy to make sure that you're kind of lined up because you can only push it up so far <laughs> before you hit the curve. Now for the curve, I'm going to take my two tooth and I'm going to mark around the curve. Now your other option is you can put your back prong into the hole you already have and then punch that hole. Back prong in, punch the front hole. But you're only punching one hole at a time there and I find that it's just a little bit quicker and you're able to kind of cope with laying out stitches like you can see I'm half a millimeter off on that one. That's where I'm meeting up with my other stitch line. So I was able to kind of push the leather, shove that in there, and now we're gonna have perfectly even stitching. But if you're more comfortable sewing or punching your holes, you know, one at a time, go for it. Nothing wrong with it. I am going to use Dunmore's cream thread in Tech 138. This color, it's gonna look like this. And by the time I finish sewing this, I'm sure our magnets and all of our glue will be dry. And then it is a matter of doing some gluing, doing some more gluing, and a couple more stitching rounds, and we're done. So assembly's weird on these just because I have kind of a short, a short rivet, but I know it'll work. It's just gonna look weird while I'm doing it. So I go washer, rivet goes through those two, then flip it over. It's, that's basically like it. We're really kind of pushing it. But as long as I can get a top clipped in here, which I can, that means that I can set that rivet. Um, even if it's trying to fall out. So I just want to make sure, it, it's pretty easy on this one because it's so tight that just make sure everything's as centered as I want it to be. There we go. I have a piece of a uh, wicket, the shadow belly and natural. Now, this stuff is nice enough to just tool and make tons of stuff. Um, I only need a little strip of it though, and I'm gonna use it for an inner liner. Just trying to, I guess I should strip this. Um, but it's not perfect. I mean, it's been sitting in my shop, so you can see it's a little tanned on the parts that have seen some, which I don't care because I got I picked this up. Um, I learned a long time ago that if you have scrap, use it for stuff like this. But if you don't have scrap, don't go looking for the junkiest leather you can find. Go for a good value. And I think the Wicket, the Shadow Bellies are really good quality. Like obviously that's clean as heck, right? But they're not too, too expensive. So, um, we are going to need this piece to be, oh, I have to do this part in inches, about two inches. So, this strip needs to be two inches deep. And I'm choosing the lines in my cutting board here to guide me. And you'll never see this piece, so that doesn't really matter at all. And then I need it to be, how, how wide did I say I was going to go? I'd use my head if it wasn't attached to me today. Every time I have a travel week, I haven't been able to travel and like, like really go on a trip, go to a concert, whatever. And like, I mean, I know most people haven't because of COVID, but with my panic disorder, I haven't been able to like go to a concert without passing out in four years. And I finally did it. Went to see the postal service, highlight of my life. They were the last on my to see before you die list. Um, oh, that's interesting. Okay, so we're gonna make this eight inches wide. That's all we need to know. 
so we're going to cut this eight inches wide. Um, but if you were at night two of Death Cab playing Transatlanticism and Pulse Service playing Give Up in Boston, I was also there. And uh, I might be a little stumbly because I have what's called CPTSD, which means that you're calm, cool, and collected while you're in the action, but then you come home and when you feel safe, your body totally freaks out. So I'm on like day two of minor panic, and um, I had already, this is like the first product I've ever made that didn't work out the first time, so I was like, I wasted all that time, and I was like, no, you know what? I'm going to put myself in my comfort zone, which is kind of late at night, and film this video like I would naturally just be at the bench making stuff. Um, because it's been really fun to do that with you guys lately. Um, it's changed pace and a little bit. So eight inches by two and a half inches is going to be what we're going to use for three of our, for a holder that will use three of our keychains. So as you can see, mine gets a ton of use and I use it for painting a lot because what you can do is you can put, do I have a scratch all in here? I don't, but you can put any sharp object through one hole and that becomes your anchor point. Then you put a pencil anywhere. These are all, there's holes everywhere. And you can just draw your radius. But the other good thing it is, the, the other thing that it's really good for is things like this where I don't have to do any counting. Well, all I have to do is a little bit of counting. So to center everything, if you don't want to do math. So that's our center. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So that means we gotta go seven over. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and we can make our little mark right there. I think the answer is not using these, but using these. And we can see very quickly that while the spacing makes sense with just the raw one inch magnets, we gotta push these out to the side about like that. So what I'm gonna do is, oh, I brought them all out. What I'm going to do is, I am going to take my calipers and I'm going to set them to where the edge of the actual keychain lands. Then I want it about there. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up this circle with this circle. And we had done seven before, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That was the one that we had used before. Right there. But I think... 8, 9, 10, 11. 11 is where we need to be. Like that. Now, I want these to be, even though you're not going to see them, technically you are going to see them as they match up once they stick to the keychains. Um, so, I'm going to find my one inch circle and I'm going to just center it the best I can. I think I'm going to use this top half inch line and it's nice because you have a cross, they're marked in the centers so you can kind of line up by eye this is centered, that centered on our hole. So I'm just going to trace out, give myself a fighting chance of making this look presentable before I go and punch out these circles. 
And now what we have is when we go to the punch, we can put that guy right there and we know it's gonna be roughly where we want it. So let's go, let's go punch these out. It's nighttime and I'm lazy, so I don't wanna adjust the press. Or I wanna adjust the press as little as possible. So I'm gonna use my taller cutting board and then instead of having to adjust this press, this is the buckle guy press, so instead of having to adjust it like an entire quarter of an inch down, which is a lot of turns, I can just go up like an eighth of an inch with the taller cutting board. I actually went too far. So we'll swing that over. And we have, oh, that one really far. <laughs> Did you ever do that? <sighs> um. There we go. So we'll get all three of these punched out. I'm going to use less pressure this time so I don't punch a quarter inch into the cutting board. And there we go. That one's a little bit easier. Oh, but it still got stuck. I wonder why they're not circular when I'm hammering them out. And we're done with that piece. This is kind of the fun part now, because what we get to do is we get to sink the magnets in and the goal is that the whole thing looks flat from the top, but the magnets are hidden underneath. Um, so I'll test it first, but we're gonna need to back this with another piece of veg tan because I'm going to back the whole piece with um, Carrazza, which will stiffen it up, and then a nice soft leather because it's going against the wall. But we need to be able to glue the magnets into something so I have to glue this onto another piece of leather in order to do that. So let me go find a piece of scrap. This is a great use of scrap is doing stuff like this. We'll glue these two things together, then we'll glue the magnets in, making sure that the polarity is correct. And, um, and then we'll be able to just assemble the whole thing. Okay, so all the glue's dried and we're gonna stick this piece to this piece. Get rid of that paper towel. <laughs> Now, as I said before, I was planning on putting these, this is gonna be the top, right? I was planning on these with the dome face up, but that's a cover, so it's more magnetic on this side, and there's really no front or back to the actual key fobs, so I wanna stick this in here, like that. So that way, when we run a piece of leather over top of this whole thing, you're not gonna see any indentations at all. I mean, you'll see a little bit, but there's gonna be no bumps or anything. It's just gonna be smooth, and you'll just kind of throw your keychain on there and it'll stick, um, hopefully. So this Corba cuts so smooth. It's really nice. Let's see how these are all nice and flush cut. Look at all. That was pretty badass, actually. Um, but, so when we put a piece of leather over it, they're inset. And you'll probably want, you want to use a leather that's about as thick as the magnet. This is about um, eight, nine ounces, I'd say. Now this is an eight inch piece across. I think I want to go nine inches total. And uh, that way I'll have a nice little inset and it'll look a little fancier. And honestly, it'll give me a little bit more room to glue around our insert here. So since this is a panel from Buckle Guy, and I got to see the big drag knife machine, and I know it's perfectly square, I can just go nine here like this, kind of play around with that, see if I like that. Yeah, that's plenty of room. Some, something, oh, it's the screws in the workbench. I'm like, the leather is, Magnetic for some reason. It's not. It's the screws in the workbench that are pulling it, that it's pulling at. 
There we go. So now, we know we have everything's right angled. That's the last we need of that panel. And what I'm going to do, we want a half inch around the three borders. So I'm just going to lightly scribe this because I don't want it coming through to the front. That one doesn't have to go all the way down, nor does this one. And this will set face first like that, right like that. Okay, so here's the test. Whew. Oh yeah, that's cool. Get home, you're just like, oh, I missed it. I'm home. Home, done. There is, yeah, these will hold. These will hold keys. Man, this is gonna be a cool piece. So here's roughly, I mean, obviously, you can like center them and stuff. Um, Here's roughly what it's gonna look like. I am very, very excited about that this worked. And I love the dimension that this brings. You can kind of see underneath it. And then, of course, this will be to protect your wall. So, yeah, that's actually really fun too. So I have four. I'm gonna make a single, making a single one I think is gonna be sick too, but like, that's just, that's soft. I mean, obviously, cause I'm using a stronger magnet, but like, that's pretty cool. All right, let's get this finished up. We had to cut it out, sew around it, and um, I'll just show you guys when it's done. All right, so it's the next day. I worked really late. Um, I filmed as much as I could, uh, but sometimes it's how I work. Sometimes I work, I follow the, idea and uh, just kept working into the night. And then I slept a little late, but the video is coming out today. So hello from today. Just, you know, it's noon now. Um, this thing works and it looks sick. Okay, so this is where I'm gonna mount mine because the door to the driveway is right there. And this is a big farmhouse. There's a lot of keys and stuff. So I loaded up all my keys onto these different things. Um, probably for privacy sake, I'm not going to tell you whatever when it does, but you can see that there's multiple keys on each one and it's plenty strong. Um, the coolest thing is you can just like throw it at it and it, sometimes it catches like, I don't think I got that in focus, but like, that's it. How cool is that? Boom, done. And then if you want to make it pretty. You just do this. So there we go. We did it. Took a three o'clock morning, bunch of filming. I did go and because I knew, I was like, oh, this is gonna look kind of, not sloppy, but just old. It looks like it's, I kind of like it because it looks like it's been here for a long time. Um, but if you want everything to be perfect, I would suggest giving yourself a trim allowance and just squaring everything off after you've glued this part in. But you can see, because we sunk the magnets in here, from the side, you can barely see the divot. So you don't even know when there's no keys on it that it's a magnet, like what it even is. But then, everything's nice and smooth. So when we put our keys on it, the leather isn't gonna wear out. The wall underneath is protected. And it's just kind of grab and go, and then get home and throw. I don't know, I like doing the throw thing, and I'm trying to do it with the one that has the most keys on it, and it does it, so I'm very excited about this one. Um, like I said, I can't make a pattern for this because, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm sure I could, but I'm not gonna try to have a money grab 
showing you guys how to cut squares out. And then there's so many variables for this. I would just suggest the one inch round magnets from Buckle Guy. That's going to be strong enough to hold your keys. Um, the 18 millimeter magnetic snaps are wonderful for everything. They're not strong enough to do this, but I'm really proud of this one. This one's, this one came out sick. So, um, if you try it, tag me on Instagram at quarter leather. I'd love to see, uh, what you guys come up with, with this concept. And thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.